Okay, good morning, good afternoon, uh, evening, evening. Um, thank you for attending Making Your LinkedIn Profile Employer Ready session. Uh, session should last about 20 to 25 minutes and I'll aim to keep it as on point as possible. Also, uh, LinkedIn training can take hours. It can take hours, days, weeks to perfect using LinkedIn as a platform. So this is just to offer up some quick fire tips to get you started or if you're returning to LinkedIn for the first time in a long while, um, or even if you know that you've registered onto LinkedIn but you've never really spent much time on making sure your profile is as good as possible. So just very quickly about myself, I'm the uh, money, well, my name's Alistair Cameron. I'm the co-founder of uh, online and offline startup focus platform and community Starticus, the head of uh, startup programs at Digital DNA. Um, um, I'm a freelance trainer for Young Enterprise and I and a freelance business trainer. Uh, previously to all of that, I worked in commercial recruitment for nine years recruiting staff for business so I just know how important that LinkedIn can be um, as a really good tool for making yourself stand out to potential employers. Um, so I'll be offering up some bite-sized tips to help uh, get your LinkedIn profile up to scratch. Um, so before I forget, uh, make sure or feel free to connect with me there too. Just type in Alistair Cameron, A-L-A-S-T-A-I-R, I should come up. Um, so this is basic to medium level training. Um, you'd need to be average ability at using tech. Um, to be fair, if you can register onto LinkedIn, then you can uh, do everything else as well. Uh, so just to anyone that doesn't really know anything about LinkedIn, it's probably the, well, it is the best networking tool for business professionals, uh, job seekers through to people that are high level executives looking for uh, new business or new jobs. Um, it's a really good networking tool, um, both for job seekers and people wanting to do business develop to development to gain more business for their current employer or their business that they own. Um, their vision is to create economic opportunity for the global workforce. Um, there's about 600 odd million people, I think, that are registered onto LinkedIn, so it's a massive platform. Its performance during the COVID and pandemic has been pretty good. Um, they've had some downturn, understandably, a lot of people are furloughed not thinking about work so much um, this is a good opportunity then for you to go and update your profile so if you are currently looking for work whether that's because you're not sure about your current employer or you just want a new challenge or that you're unemployed um, this is a really good time to do it because less people perhaps might be updating their profiles currently um, so do it now not in three four months time um, so just a quick thanks to the virtual learning festival for inviting me to do this quick session today um, there seems to be loads of stuff going on throughout the two days, so this is fantastic that you're here joining us today. Um, so why create a good LinkedIn profile? Well, if you're going to use the platform, make it as good as possible because it's your calling card, your online portfolio. It's the way that people are going to find you. It's not your own website, your personal blog, um, your CV, if you have one, or you should have one anyway. but. Um, it's it's really good because it Google ranks LinkedIn very highly so if you make your profile as optimized as possible um, as good as possible then there's a chance that you'll be found um, so number one the first thing you should do with your profile is pick a good picture so your profile picture pick a picture that looks like you not 15 years old um, as in 15 years ago not that it's an ageist thing it's purely that you don't look like the person you are in the profile picture perhaps as much as as you used to um, use a high resolution image um, make it a professional headshot or at least a headshot uh, of you alone uh, not a selfie for example uh, not a family shot not one with you you and your mates down the park um, it should be professional looking if it's not a professional headshot just at least a headshot of you alone um, when where the profile picture is at least probably 50% your face shoulders etc um, don't just use the company logo that you work for it's really lazy and to be honest it also puts people off connecting with you um, worse than that not using a picture at all um, the reason I say that is because statistically there's less chance that people will connect with you because they think they're gonna get spammed um, so you want to make sure that your profile picture is you and is professional looking um, also LinkedIn offers filters so you can use them if it makes it more professional looking um, try not to have a non distracting background uh, try to use natural light um, if at all possible uh, mine's okay it's not the best one in the world so um, it's not to say everything I do is perfect on LinkedIn as well um, add a background photo um, in my opinion this is like free retail space 
Um, like imagine going to a shop front and there not being any advertising on the outside of it and you have to go in, you have to chat to the person to find out what the shop's about. That's a bit like your banner. Um, a lot of people don't use their banner space, which is behind your, your main circled profile. Um, I use it to kind of replicate what my headline is about myself, startup and tech community champion, co-founder, startup program manager, trainer, freelance, op you know, opportunist. I'm always looking for work if anyone's looking for a trainer. Um, so, um, in that sense, if you've got keywords that you want to be associated with, and we'll talk more about keywords as we go along, um, try and put them into your headline somewhere on your banner space, or if nothing else, choose a decent picture um, that, that represents you well. Um, again, it's not about you taking a picture of a field and putting that in there or a selfie or something. It's about picking a picture that perhaps represents what you want to be found for in your career. The good thing about that is there are platforms out there for social media images um, and there will be optimized image sizes for certain platforms, so LinkedIn being one. Um, so if you just head to canva.com, uh, create a header image um, and you can find one which is the right size, it will be optimized for mobile and for desktop and it can look really professional as well. Um, try and find an image which represents you and what you want to be found for as well. It might not be so easy, but um, you can create some wording around it or add some wording onto it to kind of replicate some of the keywords that you want to be found for. Um, next thing is contact details. Just be found for your professional enough email, Twitter, website, whatever it is. Don't use your personal ones unless it is because you are working for an employer and you don't want to be found by that said employer, for example, which would be a bit of a crazy move if you're searching for jobs perhaps. Um, having said that, everyone expects you to be on LinkedIn anyway, so it's it's not going to be a problem that way. It's just if you're publicly advertising that you're looking for work, it might be an issue. Um, also, if you are using a personal email address, make sure that that email address is professional enough. Moving on to your LinkedIn headline, that should be the keywords that you want to be most associated with. So thinking of your your job view, job titles, previous job titles, um, the job or the career that you're ideally looking to be in, um, as long as you obviously have relevant education or um, experience in those areas. Um, the keywords that if you were imagining searching on Google is what you would find. Um, and that is something obviously we need to kind of think about now is the, the keywords that you'll be that will be picked up by the algorithms that both LinkedIn and say even Google use to find the right type of people. And then thinking on from that, the, the keywords that recruiters would look for, the skills that they would look for, um, and to find yourself. So that is where the headline comes in. Underneath that is the summary. So this is your accolades, your headline experiences, your skills, awards. Thinking of your CV, maybe your personal statement, which goes at the top, perhaps. Um, it's not necessarily a place to list all your daily job duties. Again, thinking of Google and keywords and thinking of LinkedIn keywords, how they are ranked, um, that's where you maybe want to optimize your profile as much as possible. Thinking of your other employees in the local area with relevant skills and experiences, your local competitor, have they done such a good job at, at ranking themselves in terms of the keywords across their profile? Um, so it's a repetition of certain things that you want to make sure that are highlighted through your, your profile. Um, the good thing about uh, LinkedIn is um, they do allow you to highlight up to 50 skills that you have. So um, th th there's a section there where you can kind of select keywords to be added in. Um, again, maybe if you can't think of keywords and key skills that you want to have in your headline and your summary section, maybe go to the skill section first, look at the keywords and things that would be relevant to yourself and use them because obviously link LinkedIn associates them with their platform already anyway. So that might be a good place to start. Moving on then you have recommendations. So this is a bit like on your CV you would have references. This is an actual opportunity for you to request and rec uh, request recommendations from people that you know. Um, so it's, it's, it's a good way of putting on a, a calling card really, like your, your accolades, your testimonials from your work colleagues, uh, your managers, previous people that you've worked with about your ability. And that could be a good way of obviously signposting to recruiters, hirers, potential employers that you're a good uh, candidate for their role alongside the experience and skills that you have. Okay, so um, searching for jobs and, and being found by employers, um, there's a job section at the top there, forgive me, it's just, pop okay, so click on that, jobs, uh, and it will take you through to, you can see at the top it says, has your job been impacted by COVID, your network and help, 
get started. I'll explain that in a minute. But at the moment, even based on my profile, um, I've got a few things set up to be fair. It's suggesting certain types of jobs that I'd be good for. Some good jobs in there, to be honest. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, also to the left there, you can see search for your next job. You can either search by title, skill, or company, and then city location. I've now gone on to what my preferences are by clicking on that section around COVID. And it's telling me that at the moment I have three job titles set up. I'm gonna add in event manager as one there as well. And I'll add a fifth one in uh, business manager. Business manager, there you go. Um, okay, uh, let's try and add in a sixth one. Okay, event, director of event management, sounds good. Thank you. Ah, it's telling me I can only have one to five titles, so we'll get rid of them, one of them. Okay, happy days. And then it's giving me the option again for, okay, I'll add in London there as well. Um, okay, only five, so I've got Belfast, Northern Ireland, Derry, Dublin, Ireland. I'll get rid of London um, for the time being. And then it gives you the option to say when you want to be starting immediately, I'm actively looking, or flexible, I'm casually looking. I only want part-time and remote work, so I've got uh, different things that I work on. Um, you'll then see that there's a share with recruiters only section. There's two options there. One is share with, own, with all LinkedIn members, um, and it adds this lovely little, I'm looking for work section there, um, open to work, which is great. Um, perhaps you want to be in a situation where you've been made redundant, you're perhaps furloughed but don't think you're going back, um, or you're unemployed. Perhaps most preferably if you're unemployed, the other ones you might want to leave that one to be fair blank. Uh, you don't want to have that one there if you're in a permanent full-time job, uh, perhaps. So keep that one away. Um, Yep, and you can see obviously that there's another way to do it there. You'll see on the left there, it says open to work. That's only open to recruiters at the moment. So this is because I'm on my profile, you can see it. And you can edit your job preferences from there as well. Um, so it's a really fab way of kind of updating your details, letting recruiters know exactly what you're looking for. And um, yeah, it can be used as a good way of flagging to recruiters and hirers that that's the situation at the moment. The amount of information you put into your profile will mean that LinkedIn is able to suggest people um, that you should connect with as well. And that's a really handy way of building your network up of perhaps people that are second de degree connections. So not you're, you're not directly connected to them, but you're you know someone you know knows them um, and they LinkedIn feels that they're relevant to you. Um, but you'll see at the top left hand side. Uh, of the LinkedIn is a search bar, find people, jobs, and more. If you click on that, um, I'm gonna cheat a wee bit here and just type in a company that I know of in Derry called Alchemy. So Alchemy Technology Services. Um, Alchemy Technology Services, okay, cool. Um, and then I've cheated a little bit there because I've already done the search, but you'll, you'll, the principle is that most companies will have their own individual page, uh, and that can be where you can follow the, that company so you'll find there's a follow option um, it just means that say for example you as an employee or a potential employee or a job seeker is thinking I would like to work for 10 companies in, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm not gonna name 10 companies now that are based in Derry but Alchemy Technology Services is one Seagate may be another um, AXA could be another you know you can name uh, a number of companies you you might have an understanding of who you would like to work for comparable to companies that you've worked for previously or perhaps that you've always had an ambition to work within. Um, so you can follow those companies. It may well be that those companies will have job pages on um, on their on their, their their overall company page and it'll alert you to jobs when they come up. You'll also see them posting information and news and this is really handy because it might well be that they you're able to connect with people then. Um, that you think is relevant, you're able to comment on posts, you can become a little bit of a, a, an advocate of that company and it's a really good way of building up um, awareness as well that you're, in, you're potentially someone that they might be interested in. So say you like a lot of people and they updated a CV three or four years ago, haven't done it since, but perhaps you've been updating your LinkedIn profile there's a handy little tool for um, all of a sudden needing to have a CV. So if you go to just past the add profile section, you've got a button called more. 
click on that and it will come to build a resume or build a CV um, as most of us would call it here. Um, so build a CV, it will then take you through to that section that will pull all the information through um, for you to then construct your latest CV. Um, there will also be copies of saved resumes as well or CVs that you can refer to as well. So that's a really nice handy tip uh, just obviously if you are job seeking and need a CV you can't find your old one perhaps. So we're now on to digital content um, and writing effective professional content. Um, content that could help you in highlight yourself, your skills, your thoughts, um, your experience. Um, and you can do all that by writing um, an article on LinkedIn or I'm just going to show you on this occasion creating a post. Um, just to make it easy, I'm just copying and pasting a few words in here to show you and obviously we're going to go through this very quickly but this, there's a whole day's worth of learning involved in this. But to summarise that post or that you know on LinkedIn can be a combination of written images, sorry, so written images, video, documents, links. Um, it can help you define the, the core themes or the core subjects that you would like to be known for and that really helps in terms of LinkedIn again suggesting people to you and also other people being suggested to look at you to connect with. Um, so uh, again thinking of keywords that are in your profile using them within your articles that you write as well or your posts that you write. Um, adding video perhaps obviously doing like a direct I'm looking for a job this is back my background experience. LinkedIn loves native video, video that is embedded onto the site. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously content is a really good way of sharing word. There is a news feed that you can read through. Um, it's just a way of um, getting reach, getting new connections. Um, if you are looking for a job in a certain area, you can do hashtags. If you're looking for certain types of jobs, you can use hashtags to suggest those type of jobs as well. Um, if you want to connect with people, obviously your companies or there's no reason why you couldn't tag a couple of companies in there and say I'm looking for work um, and hope that someone from their HR team picks up on it. Um, so content can be a really good way of one, building uh, your network, uh, but secondly obviously getting word out there that you are looking for a job at the moment. So um, now we're just kind of looking at a few little tips, hints and tips that will help. Uh, that you might not ever think to do and, and they can be really important. One is um, having a unique URL um, and that's easily done um, in that if you go to the, the top right hand part of your profile page you'll find it says edit public profile and URL. If you click on that what it will do is it will give you the option to edit your URL um, and um, your URL can be something uh, which is just a number or you can give it um, your profile name basically which is in my occasion or Alistair Cameron um, it's a pretty typical name so the chances of me getting the LinkedIn uh, profile name for Alistair Cameron was slim so I used I am Alistair Cameron um, it kind of plays on the Starticus brand that we have anyway because our Twitter handle is I am Starticus so it's not a bad thing necessarily it's just helping Google um, to rank your name in the search results when someone types in your name. So if you've got um, a typical name, um, it's harder, but all the work, all the other work you do on LinkedIn will help obviously that, that search result come back when someone types in your name with your name at the top, perhaps, or even in the first three or four. Okay, um, so we're on to our last thing now uh, for the session, which is make it on making your LinkedIn profile employer ready. Um, this obviously this training can be used if you are uh, a business owner and you're looking to upskill your employees on using LinkedIn for business purposes and as a business professional alone or as a self-employed person. Um, so these these things aren't um, exclusively just for people looking for uh, employment, but um, on this occasion it is obviously for people to get their profiles employer ready. So. Um, Obviously, if you work for a company and you need more extensive training for your employees on using things like LinkedIn, then happy to uh, have a chat. Um, that's my little promo over. So, final tip. 
So final tip is on the same section where you're able to edit um, your custom URL, your unique URL, you'll also be able to edit your visibility. Um, so a um, bit of a problem if you have not turned your profile public visibility on. So you can do all of these changes and then if you haven't changed your profile's public visibility to on or it's been set as off, it would limit the amount of uh, effect all the updates you've done on your profile um, have on things like search engines and permitted other services and things like that. And also maybe even being pe people being able to search um, so you can kind of change your profile photo to only um, all LinkedIn members or just first degree connections. There's lots of other things that you can turn on and off on LinkedIn, um, which could um, result in changes to your visibility in terms of search results as well. So I have mine all set as on. Um, you might not want that to be the case, and that's fair enough as well, but it will limit or have an impact on your search engine optimization in, a, in the sense of being able to be found through LinkedIn or search engines and things like that.